Hello and welcome to another episode of the Law of Relevancy podcast. We speak to business leaders about marketing and communication topics that help us stay more relevant in our careers. We guarantee that you will learn at least one thing during today's episode. I'm Cord Zoen. I'm the president of Bake More Pies, a full-service digital marketing and advertising agency here in Tampa, Florida. And today, I'm joined by Bob Rorlach. Hi, Cord. Bob is the CEO of the newly rebranded Tampa Bay Chamber. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, you're very welcome. So I'm here to talk to you about uh, what it's like to to lead a chamber and in the in 2020. Well, I think it's the best job in town. So I really enjoy what I'm <laughs> doing. Uh, it's a lot of fun working with all the businesses in the region. That's great. Well, so how did we? How did you actually get to this position? So it seems like you have over 30 years' experience in economic development. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got into the, this, this sure. position that you're in? Uh, well, I, I wanted to come back to Florida after grad school uh, where I got my master's in economic development. I grew up in Orlando. So I started working in Melbourne, but then uh, I was, got recruited to come join the old Committee of 100 in the Tampa Chamber. Mm -hmm. uh, and things were so busy then recruiting business that we would drop one client off at the airport, walk down to the next gate, pick up the next client on that same time and go tour them around the area. It was really a fast-growing period in the 80s. I uh, was here for about seven years, left. Uh, to go to uh, uh, Gainesville, actually Tallahassee, and then came back to uh, Tampa to run the Committee of 100. Uh, uh, we quickly grew our family to three small children uh, and went to Gainesville and ran the economic development. Then we merged with the chamber and had the opportunity to run a state program for the state of Mississippi. Uh, but the whole time, every time we left Tampa, my wife was telling me she wanted to get back to Tampa, and I did too. So after a couple years of uh, other jobs that uh, were a lot of fun, was able to come back to be the CEO then at the Greater Tampa Chamber of Commerce. Well, I, I certainly think we can all agree it's a fantastic place to live. I, I, I remember when I was in college, I came down here, it was, I think it was 2000, 2001, and uh, just came down here to vacation and never wanted to live anywhere else. I've right. lived here ever since. Yeah, it, we joke it's the biggest small town in America uh, because everybody gets to know everybody quickly, and you expect people to be mixing with those who have been born and raised here and a lot of people from somewhere else and we're all here to make it a better region. So it's, it's a great area to come, come be a part of. I totally agree. So tell us about, so you just went through a major rebranding, right? Um, and it, it seems like uh, there was a little confusion about the brand before you did the rebranding and, and now it seems like you're kind of bringing some of those ideas home to where they've always should have been. Yeah, it, it was a great exercise. Uh, it was a heavier lift than we thought because it was such a an important, deep discussion to have. Uh, we involved a lot of our members. We had two different, uh, we call them caucus groups that mm -hmm. dig deep into issues we're working on, uh, but their committees working in a task force format. We also involved a lot of our members that were surveyed and polled and focus grouped on how they saw us uh, uh, in the region. And it, it was a real team effort to look at not just where we are now, but where do we want to be for the next generation and the next generation as we grow this organization. Uh, we work very hard to make sure the chamber stays relevant mm -hmm. with what we do, and now we want to make sure we stay relevant with who we are and how we're identified. And, and being a regional name player just makes sense. That does make sense. So you mentioned about the future. You, you talked about how or where the chamber is going. So could you tell us a little bit about how the, the chamber is evolving? Sure. Uh, when I first worked at the chamber when I was in my 20s, uh, I, I was an employee who wasn't even allowed to go into a board or a meeting. Now we've had a strong focus on emerging leaders, young professionals. Started millennials, millennials are starting to age out, so it's the next generation, 21 to 35, making sure they feel like now is when you need to be involved. Now is when you need to be helping to decide what this community is about. So that's a huge change. Uh, that, that chair of Emerge sits on the board. So it's been a huge impact for the organization to bring young thought leaders in early who are helping to learn what's going on, but also help shape what's going on. Uh, that's been a big push. We have a very strong program on Minority Business Accelerator, where we're making sure that all aspects of the business community are benefiting from the economy and how we work together. So it, it's more of a focus on things are good, how do we make sure things are good for everyone who's working in this area? Well, I think that's really important. A couple of points you just brought up. You talked about how the Tampa Bay area is evolving. Could you give us a little bit more insight into what you're seeing in your, in your position? Sure. Businesses don't see this as one county or two counties or three counties. They see it as a big region. They're drawing employees from multiple counties. We do at the Chamber. We have employees uh, in several different counties. But all 
go where they want to work, where they see opportunity. And we need to be thinking along those lines. Uh, looking at the airport, it's always been rated one of the best facilities, but the current team running the airport said, this is good, but we can do better with better destination connections. So they boldly went after it and told all of us, come along, we want you to be a part of it. And we do go with them. They, they talk all the aviation technicalities that I honestly don't understand the numbers they're talking about, but the airlines like it. And then we talk about, and this is how we will help you become part of our community. So it's that, how do we all work in this together? Same thing for Port Tampa Bay, sure. a vital economic engine. How do we help them succeed? That's our role. Sometimes we'll lead, sometimes we'll support, sometimes we will applaud and be so happy with the work others are doing in their role in the community. So it's all that working together that make us, makes us succeed. So, um, so for people who aren't familiar with the work that the chamber actually does, could you give us a, like an example of how the, how the chamber actually played a role in connecting some of those dots? Sure. Yeah, our mission is to serve our members and enhance our community by building business success. And we do that through our 10-year Vision 2026 plan, which has three pillars. We are a catalyst for change, we are a hub for businesses to learn best practices and network together, and that we're an inclusive organization. Uh, not just uh, through ownership, uh, ethnicity, or male-female, or veteran-owned, but the type of business, the size of business, the age of the business, that we truly represent Hillsborough County. Some of the things we do will benefit the community, but we don't go put our, our brought to you by logo on it. A great example, uh, the I-4 connector that sure. connects Interstate 4 and the Selman Expressway. That was worked on for years and years. Finally got the money to do that. It's been a great addition. Uh, the Tampa Hillsborough Expressway Authority manages that, does an awesome job. And that's not just a Tampa benefit that helps us. Uh, uh, our contacts in Pinellas County say how it's helped them get through the region so much faster and so much better. They're appreciative of it. So it's a great asset, as well as all the trucking industry leaving the port can hop on that, connect I-4, right. 275, and, and be on their way to deliver goods, which makes our port more viable. That's a hidden issue that works on. Uh, funding for Moffitt Cancer Center, mm -hmm. support for uh, the University of South Florida, and that they consolidate, become a stronger university, a preeminent university that we supported them in their efforts to do that. Those issues are really important, the elements being stronger for businesses to take advantage of. Reminds me of the old BASF commercials. It's exactly. Like, we're, not the <laughs> we're not the paint. We're what That's makes right. the paint brighter, right? right? So exactly. when you see these really cool, exciting things happening around the Tampa Bay region, right. there's, a, there's a good chance the chamber is involved in some way. Right. Fashion. And we took that position when the Republican National Convention was here in 2012. We created a media center where we helped the media connect yeah. on information, but also to people they would want to interview. And I kept reminding our board, we want them to talk about Tampa Bay, huh and then the, the chamber, but more importantly, Tampa Bay. That's what builds sure. our brand as a region. And we'll take the same role with the Super Bowl coming uh, in a year. We want it to be successful, we want it to work, but it's about them having the right experience here and how do we help make sure that happens. Yeah, absolutely, and it's, I, I mean, it's, I love living here. So, one more question. So, it's uh, doing a little research on the chamber. It seems like the chamber's won a lot of awards lately. It seems like this is almost like a showcase for best practices in, in chambers, right? Well, we think so. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, we worked hard to achieve the, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce five-star accreditation. Mm -hmm. they, they have uh, four different levels. Five stars, the top level you can get. Uh, less than 2% of chambers in the United States have achieved that level. We're very proud of that. We made it a team effort to achieve that level. Everybody was involved and, and we talked about it at each of our staff meetings right. on how to get to that level. Uh, we knew we already were. We had to make sure the U.S. Chamber understood that we were uh, and they agreed. Uh, we also have won State Chamber of the Year before, uh, which is wow. great. Uh, we've had staff win, uh, staff member of the year for chambers for the state before. So those are nice and we're proud to get those recognitions, but it's more of what our members are saying that really tell us this is what they want. Uh, and they're, they're liking what they do and the attendance is strong. Uh, those issues that show us that we're doing what the members want to see us doing and they like being involved in the organization. Uh, so I lied, one last question. Okay. <laughs> um, so if someone's a new member and they are just joining the chamber, what are some words of advice for you, for them, to get the most out of that experience? It's the easiest thing, but it's also the hardest thing. It's show up. Uh, Tampa is a town that people will meet you in one place and the next time they see you it's like, hey, I met you at that event. Right. And then you, you build your network and you go. Uh, so we encourage members to just come, learn more about the organization, plug in where you have the interest, 
and where it makes sense for your business, and you'll see the benefit. If that doesn't work, we'll talk to you about other ways to plug in. There's a lot of different ways. We can fill up a schedule very sure. easily. So we tell people, plug in where it makes sense. Don't try to do everything. And if somebody wanted to follow what's going on with the chamber or how to get involved, where would they go? Sure, tampabaychamber.com. Uh, we also have Tampa Bay Chamber on Facebook uh, and on Twitter. There's a lot of different ways to watch us, but uh, the easiest way uh, to get engaged is tampabaychamber.com. So just go to the website. Yes. Very good. Well, thank you again for joining us for another, another episode of the Law of Relevancy podcast. I'm Corzone. You can find all the episodes on the Bakemore Pie social media channels. I appreciate you joining us. See you next time.